Hi guys, I'm back again today with how Sweden turns its waste into gold. Oh, come on. I have a lot of waste here. You want to turn it to gold? I'll be happy. Um, our waste turns into more waste. I can tell you that. But sometimes it's beneficial. I mean, oh, actually, actually, let me say this before we start. Clap for the Philippines. Because I went to BGC, which is like a very advanced city here in the Philippines. It's Manila. It's very modern. It's very high-end. It's where the rich people are, right? So over there, they're advanced. They're living the life. So I saw those boxes thingy uh, where you can put your like plastic blah, blah, blah. And, oh, actually, I saw one here also in our mall. But that's the only place I've seen it. But they're in that city. Um, they have it all over the place. But then here in our city, we have it only in the mall. The only biggest mall we have, right? Because it's a small city. Um, so there you can take your trash, like your plastic trash, and put them in this thingy, 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 which is good. But like nobody is going to carry their plastics and go to the mall, right, and throw their trash, or we can't all go to that city and throw our plastic. Like, so we have to... Ugh, it's complicated. Because I saw that you guys, you have, like, on the streets, right, you can you segregate the plastics, the cardboards, and then whatever else, and you can throw your trash, like, anytime you want, as we have, like, once a week, yeah, and it doesn't turn to gold, I think. But anyways, I'm going to shut up and let's see this. Landfills are responsible for the release of toxins and harmful substances into the atmosphere. Why do you put it then? More we than half ours. of the world's waste, 59% in fact, ends up in landfills. In the U.S., they are the third largest source of anthropogenic methane emissions a gas 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Methane alone accounts for nearly 15% of the country's total emissions and is associated with air and water pollution as well as biodiversity loss and land degradation. But this does not apply to Sweden. This is the only country in the world that recycles all its garbage and in addition buys it from other countries. The Swedes have learned to make big money out of garbage. So how do they turn trash into gold? We will talk about that in this video. They say that it's not clean where they clean, but where they don't litter. But the Swedes managed to change it into it's clean where they repair, share and recycle. 1% of that is exactly how much garbage ends up in Swedish landfills. According to the Afal Sverige Swedish Waste Management Association, Sweden now recycles more than 99% of household waste. The recycling system works so well that almost all developed countries that are not indifferent to their own ecology take an example from it. Why does this system work? Not because the Swedes are some kind of aliens eating garbage or because the waste has mastered the ability to teleport itself into space. The system started working not yesterday, but in the 70s of the last century. Sweden, which has a harsh climate and is completely dependent on natural gas supplies, decided to radically change the energy situation. Experts calculated that each Swede produced about one and a half kilograms of garbage a day. And given that four tons of household waste more than compensate for the use of one ton of oil, simple logic led the Swedes to the only right decision the country was seriously carried away by waste processing. The secret of the Swedes was that, while in other countries this practice remained within the framework of an environmental experiment, the Swedes approached it with all seriousness and practicality. And since 2002, it has been strictly prohibited in Sweden to dispose of waste, from which energy can be obtained into landfills. Even the industry itself runs on garbage. Swedish garbage trucks run on biogas or electricity generated from waste. 
Waste incineration plants operating on the waste to energy technology are replacing nuclear power plants in Sweden. On average, such plants produce about 17 terawatt hours of energy per year. This energy is enough to heat a significant part of the territory of Sweden. And if a conventional thermal power plant needs coal, then for such plants it is garbage. That is, raw materials that cost practically nothing. Solid waste recycling provides 20% of the heat in Swedish homes. The Swedes even accept garbage from other countries. It is brought to them for free, for example from Norway. Neighbors are only too happy to get rid of garbage. But for the Swedes, this is essentially an energy resource. For every one ton of garbage, incineration plants receive $43. For instance, in 2014, Sweden received 2.3 million tons of garbage from Norway, Ireland and the UK. So, in addition to raw materials for heat energy, Sweden received the profit of almost $100 million. What? But Sweden doesn't live off garbage alone. The Swedes themselves admit that incineration is not that good. Burning an old thing and making a new one consumes much more energy than recycling. In addition, burning garbage releases CO2 which exacerbates the greenhouse effect. Therefore, the population is strongly encouraged to sort garbage and hand it over for recycling. For the convenience of residents, sorting stations have been installed throughout the country, located in supermarkets, municipal institutions, and even in the subway. Now in Sweden, 48% of household waste is recycled, while the rest goes to incinerators. For example, the fibers contained in paper are restored up to seven times. Plastic is recycled and used to make new things up to seven times. Waste recycling has opened up new business opportunities. Some are selling battery-derived lead, some are turning tires into fiber for artificial football turf flooring, and some are turning old newspapers into eco-friendly shovels to clean up after dogs and cats. Moreover, Sweden produces the most e-waste of any EU country, around 200,000 tons annually. Since 2014, all retailers of equipment in the country have been obliged to accept broken obsolete equipment for recycling on an exchange basis. When you buy a new computer, you have the right to return the old one at the same time and get a discount. Plus, the government encourages the Swedes to repair household appliances, shoes, bicycles, reducing the tax on profit by an amount equal to half. What? If you, if you know here in the Philippines what we do with all the broken gadgets, it's just stuck in one corner. I have like so many fo phones from like my bbm if you remember the blackberry i still have them to my galaxies to the first iphone ever and then the, those they're all stuck somewhere we have televisions we have like huh. half the cost of services That's really junk. the system of fines explanatory work and active social advertising help to accustom the Swedes to conscious sorting. In many kindergartens in Sweden, children learn how to make garden compost from potato peels and other food scraps. And recycling is generally a separate subject in the curriculum next to physical education and music. In addition, sharing services are actively developing where instead of buying things and owning them in splendid isolation, people share everything they can, from cars and housing to skis and bicycles. It's reached the point where a whole new genre of commercials appeared in Sweden, namely Pentamera, which literally means recycle more. A bright environmentally friendly future in Sweden means the so-called circular economy, as we weren't lying when we said that the Swedes turn garbage into gold, they make serious money on it. The classical approach or linear production is when we take resources from the environment and return them back, but already in the form of garbage in landfills. The circular economy hopes to turn this straight line into a circle by recycling all or almost all waste, reusing that raw material for the production of things or energy and so on ad infinitum as long as it is expedient. It is difficult to say whether the rest of the world shares this approach, but the developed powers are trying to learn from the experience of the Swedes. So in Japan, they learn to build islands from plastic. 
The artificial island Odaiba in Tokyo Bay was created from compressed garbage. Parks, factories, an airport, as well as an elite residential complex are already located on its territory. The Land of the Rising Sun is no less scrupulous in its approach to internal ecology issues and now everything from sportswear to carpets is made from recycled materials. So far, many countries are still far from a waste-free Swedish life. For this, they would have to at least reconsider their relationship with plastic bags and refuse to take them at the checkout in the store, even for free. In other words, change their minds. Discover the inner Swedes in you, and the next time you go to the store, take not a plastic bag, but a special <laughs> grocery bag shopper. <clears throat> okay, yeah, we stopped using plastic bags too here a long time ago because it's just not allowed. So they use paper bags, so which is good, and then or you buy your you bring your own bag or you buy the green bags uh but anyway so that's so interesting that trash can be gold because we definitely need our trash to turn to gold of course we don't have like the machineries or technologies to do that but i feel like we can start somewhere right but anyways beautiful people thank you and i'll see you tomorrow bye